Rome was in chaos. Religious issues, financial collapse, internal struggles, and worst of all, the enemies on her doorstep. The Vandals, the Goths, the Aussie Goths, and the Emos. The last episode was all about the rise of Rome, but now it is time to go over how it all collapsed. Historically, according to Rome Total War, Barbarian Invasion. Now a lot happened between these two sources. That is not covered, but don't worry, this video will catch you up. Between 270 BC and 200 BC, the Roman Empire came to dominate the entire world under their first emperor, Brutus. It stayed like that completely still for around 500 years until suddenly a massive rebellion happened and the outer borders of the empire broke away. This rebellion was so brutal that entire cities all over disappeared. It saw the rise of the Sassanids, the Huns, the Germanic tribes, the Celts and many more, but none as powerful as the united power of the rebels who returned to the world and who all shared one common nationality, rebel and would continue working together, no matter how distant they were. Before, religious differences had no real effect on public order. People lived freely and happy. But then, suddenly, Christianity came. <laughs> And then all hell seems to be let loose. The old gods of Rome disappeared and new ones came into play. Mithras, who offers a wide variety of benefits, and Sol Invictus, who offers exactly what Mithras offers, but less. For some dumb reason. Generals decided to spread their own faith also in the regions that they were in. What is interesting is that the basic spies and diplomats of the time can be just as religiously influential as the major generals and governors, whereas the priests have no effect at all on religion. Their only use is to boost the morale of the troops, most likely still pagan though. Also, somewhere along the line, the barbarians got smarter. The barbarians finally discovered how to build a catapult. This technology had been unknown to them for centuries, despite seeing it in almost every battle and having the skills to build ladders, rams and siege towers. A catapult is something they never got their head around until 300 AD. Oh yes, as I was taught in school, BC stands for before Christ and AD means after death. So whatever measurement used during the 33 years Jebus was alive for is unknown. I therefore decided to create my new counting system. I call it Poop People Alter Others Perspectives. Ah, poop! Looks like Mr. Squarepants understands poop. Rome at this point was under heavy financial strain. Little did they know they had been empire building for centuries to be masters of the Mediterranean trade. And the moment they achieved that goal, it seems they no longer care for the Great Sea. There's next to no parts at all in their world. These simple to build, cheap parts that could triple the empire's profits just never existed at all. However, that seems highly unlikely. Archaeologists may have the splanation. Rivers suddenly have 
more points that are possible to cross. Areas of the river where the water is a bit more shallow than in its older days. It is believed the Roman world around this time experienced a drought. The rivers pulled back, allowing for these extra crossings, but also rendered the Roman ports obsolete, as they were no longer connected to the sea, and now they have to be rebuilt. The West is also about to go through its own civil war, unrest everywhere, half the empire is about to riot, and the majority of it break away to join other factions. This, combined with the economic failure, religious chaos, and the wars coming for them, really begins to show why the empire collapsed. Meanwhile, the East has some trouble in Philadelphia, which they solve by lowering the tax and moving a few guys in there to uh, calm it down. And to add on to all of this, Rome split herself into two different empires, ruled by two different leaders for a short period of time. They will share power, and then, in the far future, the two will come together peacefully and unite, handing absolute full power to one of them, whilst the other abandons his army and gets nothing. Yeah, that was going to work. This was done so that the two empires would be easier to manage, distance from capital being the main problem in Roman society. And so, the split was made and the empire centralised much more efficiently. And yet, still, they chose the two most awkward places to build their capitals. Rome on the far right, and Constantinople in the far north, creating, yet again, the exact same problem. Why not just, I don't know, have governors and provinces? We will never know. Oh. So that is the situations the Romans are in. Of course, going by the limited sources we have on this period, but how about the rest of the world? Well, it seems the remnants of the Egyptian Empire and the Parthians joined forces to create a new Seleucid Empire. The Germans are no longer nationalistic towards one cause. But don't worry Germans, your unification will happen again. 1080 AD to be a matter of fact. The nations are going through their gothic phase. It's not a phase, I'm going to be like this forever. Ha, <laughs> yeah, sure. And the Scythians finally got their religion sorted and managed to accidentally release hell itself into the world. However, it is good to see that the Sarmatian army is already beginning its charity work by helping out the Romans, all the way in Britain. I have been Melkor and this is History of the World According to Total War, Episode 3, Barbarian Invasion. But this episode is a double parter, as there's quite a lot to cover. In part 4 of the series, also known as part 2 of the Barbarian Invasion section, also known as part 3 if we go by the release date of the sources, also known as part 1 if this is the first video of mine you have seen. What was I saying again? The next part will be next week, if we can get this to 1000 likes that is. If not, it will still happen just a few weeks later on. Thank you for watching class, your homework this week is to think of a better anagram for poop. Subscribe and share with anyone you think will be interested, and I hope to see you in the next one, tomorrow's video, but for now, goodbye.